You're listening to a podcast from The Word. So are we going to start with the Stackwaddy game? Stackwaddy game. All right. Okay. So I'll go first. Okay. Go on. The Sub Pop label in 1980. All right. Home mm. of Grunge, based in Seattle. And in the 1980s, they had various groups signed to them. Later on, of course, Nirvana. Um, and uh, many of these bands had kind of names that were raw and somewhat unvarnished. <laughs> And here are five, so you have to spot the fake. Signed to Sub Pop, late 80s, okay. Bambi Slaughter, <laughs> Blood Circus, <laughs> Scratch Acid, <laughs> Naked Ray Gun, <laughs> and Cat Butt. Oh, the last one, Cat Butt. Cat Butt, butt. okay. So it's Bambi Slaughter, Blood Circus, Scratch Acid, Naked Ray Gun. And cat butt. Well, I have I have Is no it? idea. They're all really good, really plausible. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a guess that the ringer is scratch acid. Oh, oh no, it's not. No, no, okay. it's not. no. It's Bambi. It's, I mean, impossible to tell. Is it is Bambi it, Slaughter I is in was... fact the ringer. Although Bambi Slaughter was, of course, the name. Of course, that's really is. Was the title <laughs> of a song by Nirvana. So it's not oh, far I off, see. but it's exactly the kind of thing that's uh, in a re- keeping with the sensibility a, of the times. It's a very good name, Bambi Slaughter. It's a great name, very Bambi Slaughter. It's a good name for a band, isn't it? Yeah, so there yeah. we are. All right, go um, on. What have you got? Well, I tell you what I've got. I, I've got some uh, sense uh, suggestions sent in by a listener, Paul Jackson. Oh, go, okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Paul had an idea, and he, he supplied some candidates, and uh, and I, I've filled it out a bit. And so these are comics making records based on their catchphrases. That's a good uh, idea. Isn't that a good idea? A very That's good a idea. Great from, idea from yeah, Paul yeah. Jackson. Okay, so here are five, and you have to work out which one never happened. Okay, okay. Larry Grayson shut that door. That's good. This is so Can- already plausible, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Cannon and Ball rock on, Tommy. Yep. Morecambe Wise get out of that. Yeah. Bruce Bruce Forsyth, I'm in charge. Tommy Cooper, just like that. Which one of those didn't happen? That's really, really good. Shut it, that door. I'm going to say straight away did happen because I can remember that record, and I can also remember, I think, Rock on Tommy. But I'm in charge, just like that, and get out of that. I'm tempted to say. They're all absolutely plausible. I tend to say actually that it's the Morecambe and Wise because Morecambe and Wise would they would they have had would get out of that? Was that the catchphrase that they would have traded on? I suppose it was. I'm mean, still. I'm going to say it's Morecambe and Wise. Am I right? You're right. Oh no! Right. All the rest okay. are yeah. All the rest are real. Larry Grace shut that door. Came out in 1972. I remember uh, that. Cannon the ball. Rock on, Tommy. Came out rock on, Tommy. Bruce Forsyth uh, in 1960 did. I'm in charge. Tommy Cooper, just like that. I, I don't know exactly when it came out, but it was real. And uh, Morecambe Wise, get out of that. Yes, you're right. That's that's it, a brilliant. It, it's possibly not their um, not their catchphrase. I mean, they never really had one catchphrase, did they? Uh, Morecambe Wise. What do you think of it so far? No, they didn't though. They didn't. No, no, short hair, short hair, hairy legs. Bring me sunshine. They? they did exactly. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, I mean, I've been catching some clips, old clips of theirs on YouTube the other day. My God, at their best. They That's just, it, it's, it was comedy out of thin air. It's just out of nothing. It's, no, it's not even a script. You know, it's just, it's just what they do. It's just being a, being funny men. You know, it's absolutely remarkable. So, and re- and just so beautifully routine, isn't it? I mean, they, no, they, I mean, there was a script, wasn't it? But they went off at tangents. There are bits where where Eric is clearly improvising, and that's what makes Ernie fall apart, isn't it? Is that he's not expecting it, and I love that. I love well, that. yeah, he has all kinds of things going on. But I was, I, I'd still find hilariously funny the uh, repeated uh, visual gag that they used to do at the end of all their shows which was that Ernie was out front singing some swing favourite and Eric Eric. was crossing at the back, leaving, wearing a brown uh, Macintosh and uh, and a carrier bag. He was on his way home, you know. The idea that Eric Eric was always on his way home while Ernie was still out there, you know, doing the songs. My God, we were blessed, weren't we? 
Well, then we were blessed, and the, and that routine that we all used to do at school. You remember the old the, the self strangling from behind? Yeah, the curtain? yeah. Christ, that was funny. Drag through, fantastic. Weren't they on the same bill as the Beatles on? Um, I think on one of the uh, Ed Sullivan shows, the very first Ed Sullivan show. Uh, they, they were, I, I think they, they were kind of bottom of the bill with Morecambe and Wise. I'm fairly sure. They might have been on one of them. Morecambe and Wise. They yeah. went. Out, Morecambe and Wise went over before the Beatles, I think. Um, I think they tried a few times in America. It never really worked. Obviously, never, never worked for them. It's, it's, it's hard to believe that it ever exported to London from the north of England. I know. Uh, let I know. alone to let them to New York. So, yeah. so Lily Allen, Lily Allen, Lily Allen, who's yes, launched a um, um, a sex aid to uh, to encourage uh, women to talk confidently about pleasure. As CNN's headline put it, and fair enough, absolutely right. Have you seen the? Have you seen the advert? No. Have you seen the, oh, she's done adverts. Oh, uh, right, okay. oh yeah. What happens in the advert? They're, they're really, really clever. I have to say, I think this is an inspired move by whoever, by either the kind of. Uh, the, the the sex toy firm who I think are called Womanizer. I think Womanizer. That's, yeah, that's the brand. Yeah, and and by her, I think the hookup between the two is absolutely inspired because uh, she she has um, she has written about this stuff in the past. She wrote a wrote a feature in in um, Stylist magazine um, about best sex toys or whatever, which is a fairly unprecedented thing for a pop star to do. I would have thought. Of of which more in a moment, um, but now there's obviously there been some kind of hookup, and they they've launched this thing, presumably in time for Christmas, okay, and of course. Uh, that's right, obviously, <laughs> and in the stocking, <laughs> I, I tell you, there will be a, you know, once you've gone, once you once you've gone public with this, there will be a ton of them in the stocking, no doubt about it. Yeah, 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 and um, and the advert. Is very much like those adverts that you might see around about the same time of the year, featuring uh, film stars or pop stars or whatever, um, telling you about their association with a fragrance is what they normally do, isn't it? You know, I, I, I've I've worked hard with the people at Longcon or Coty or whatever to develop a fragrance that I feel expresses. You know what the the same qualities that's got people to buy loads of copies of my record or tickets to my show or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And uh, all this has done is taken the same thinking and applied it to the far more lucrative area of sex toys. So it's just Lily being so sort of Lily and attractive and friendly, and she's the perfect person for this. You know, absolutely ideal person. You know, because it, it's all it all fits with her image about you know. Oh well, let's. I'll talk about anything. Me, you know. Oh, absolutely. Well, her songs have been. There's nothing she hasn't uh, tackled yeah. in, in the in her lyrics. You know, it's and a brilliant idea. It's, it's a br- idea. it's a brilliant idea. I really think it's just fantastic. And also, I might say, it suits lockdown a little bit, doesn't it? I think. I don't know. I suppose. I suppose I didn't thought that. But <laughs> just a thought. I, just a thought. I, <laughs> they they'll probably do it. Probably do another line called the lockdown. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. To be a specific device to deal with yeah. that period. But you see, we were we were talking about this yesterday, weren't we? And, um, and I've been thinking about it ever since. That finally, here's a pop star, um, you know, lending her, her her kind of image and her weight or whatever to a subject that pop stars know a huge amount about. <laughs> Which is wanking. <laughs> <laughs> they just, like, you know, for years we've been having to tolerate pop stars telling us about how to bring peace to the world, or you know, yeah. all the industrial relations, or, or, or you know, more more warmth in the family, or or how to sustain love affairs. All things that they know bugger all about. Absolutely nothing about. But years of being on the road and <laughs> stuck, rather bored in in uh, in uh, remote hotels. <laughs> See, this is the great truth. This is the great truth. You know, people like to think that um, that the artist, you know, makes their way off stage at the end of a triumphant gig and goes off to have you know extraordinary sexual encounters with uh, with hordes of glamorous members of the opposite sex. 
not true in the overwhelming majority of cases. Well, it was just to go back to to the ibis for a, for a jodrell. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think, so. I don't think yeah. this is a great truth. I, I'm not going. I do. I do remember an interview with Sting once in in, in Q, and somebody said to him, uh, "It was one of those things where you, you know, it was readers' questions." So they said to him, um, "You know, uh, do you ever have a <laughs> do you ever have a wank when you're?" <laughs> <laughs> where you're in some you know, distant hotel or something. And he said, oh, sometimes I said, if I'm a bit lonesome and I can't get off to sleep, he said, I'll give it a polish. <laughs> Absolutely. I've never heard that expression before. <laughs> oh, God. It's brilliant, that idea. And I, um, I've, we, uh, I, I, I introduced this exhibit A, a in this. Do you know this record? Jackson Brown. Oh, run, yeah, yeah, yeah. Running it's got on Rosie it. on it. It's got a song called Rosie, which you wrote with a guy called Don, Don Miller. And it... It's a brilliant song because it's it's written from the point of view of a um, a, of a kind of sound engineer. I think really he tries to, you know, tries to meet up with a girl at the show. You know, she was she was standing about backstage or whatever, and um, and uh, in the end of the evening she goes off with the drummer. He gets nowhere nowhere at all, and uh, and so he, he returns to his hotel room to seek. Consolation. It's very really poignant. This to, to seek consolation in Rosie, who's clearly his red right hand. <laughs> as the, That's right. As the old song goes, <laughs> because the, the refrain is "Rosie, you're all right. You wear my ring." That's so, <laughs> so good. Yeah. When you hold me tight, Rosie, that's my thing. When you turn out the light, I've got to hand it to me. I got to hand it to me. It looks like you and me again. L- looks like Rosie. Is that the me, one? Yeah. Again, me again tonight, Rosie. It's just an absolutely. It's a genuinely lovely song. It's a beautiful song, you know. Whereas I feel so many of the songs that have been openly about about masturbation, and there have been quite a few. Pictures of Lily. I suppose pictures of Lily. Well, I don't know that's openly, but it's it's implied, isn't it? Because he says he can't sleep at night. His dad says, try putting these pictures on your wall. That might help, you know. But it is fairly obviously. But not as not as uh, obviously as things like Lucinda Williams right in time. Remember that one where she's yes. lying in her bed? She takes off her watch and her earrings and takes off her bracelets, you know, and uh, I lie back and moan at the ceiling. You remember that one? Oh, that's oh, pretty right, specific. of course. Of course, of course. But also a really poetic one was Billy Bragg's and Swindon's Day. This is, with my own hands, when I make love to your memory, it's not the same. I miss the thunder, I miss the rain. That's very uh, good. Very good, very good. So, um, no, I think I think Lily's done a, did a good day's work, this is, actually. And I'm damn sure if it succeeds, like I think it will, everybody else will be thinking, Bugger it! Should have done that. Why didn't you know? I think of that? <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> I, think of that. I know. I know. What did I think? Cindy Lauper should have done. Cindy Lauper's she bop was an early. Oh, uh, that's early true. Do you remember that's that one? True. There's I so touch myself every night in tight blue jeans in the pa- in the pages of of a blue boy magazine. Hey, I've been thinking of a new sensation. I'm picking up a good vibration. I want to go south and get some more. <laughs> so that's pretty. That's pretty explicit, isn't it? There's a Tom. Oh, there's Wait- a great song by 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 Tweet. Do you remember that came out in two thousand and two? Tweet. Oh, called, Oops. Yeah. Oh my. Oh She's God. I've she, that. And she comes with an R and B single. She it's comes a really back good for record. A party. Really kind of turned on by all the people. It's a really good record. <laughs> and uh, and then she passes a mirror and she sees herself in the mirror. And then that's the moment when she finds she's she's, she's finally found someone she's. Uh, she uh, fancies enormously. And, uh, well, you know, as so, so Woody Allen famously said, you know, why not masturbation? It's sex with someone I love. Sex with someone I love. Um, I was I was thinking about this, the, the old Tom Waits thing when he did that double live album, Night Hawks at the Diner, when he was big on what he used to call this kind of semi-song poetry rap. Yeah things that he used to describe as his nocturnal emissions, didn't he? And <laughs> and I can't, I can't remember. There's one of those I haven't listened to in years where he talks about going back to the hotel and uh, on his own, he says, oh, same old thing, making the scene with a magazine. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he said, and there's a pause. There's an audience there is laughing. He goes, I'm not weird about it. I don't tie myself up first. <laughs> Which I thought was really good. It's excellent. 
It's excellent. That's very so, funny. you know, if anybody no, out you're there... Funny. You're absolutely right. There are so many... Lady Gaga had a song called Dancing in Circles and there was Sex With Me by Rihanna. So there's two people right in that market who could have who could have got there first and but could have Lil- got out some kind of... Lily's the perfect person. She Lily's is. just the perfect person. And by God, it'll be it'll be going mad this Christmas. <laughs> I think it will. There's people probably ordering them as we speak. <laughs> Genius. The Word Podcast. Prime cuts of popular culture served fresh each week. So Spencer Davis died the other day um, at the age of 81. Really interesting life. I mean, part of a group that had three absolutely phenomenal records that have never, ever seemed out of vogue. They've always seen contemporary. So those are... Running, somebody help me. Give me some... Yes, keep on running. Somebody help me. And uh, give me some love here. I mean, they're fantastic records. And then, you know... Bits of uh, little side projects and groups of his own and bits of production work and, and uh, formed a super group at one point with Randy Meisner and Denny Lane. And then eventually finished up from the late 70s, was living in Catalina Island mm-hmm. off of Los Angeles. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> presumably there's some money still rolling in from those records. They well, well you, you, today, you would hope so. They're, they're, they're yeah. the kind of records that, you know, still get used on commercials and yeah, yeah. tracks and radio Playlist or whatever. I tell you the funny thing about Spencer Davis, which did makes you, him you almost you? unique of that yeah. generation of the sixties, which is he'd been to university, so he was a bit older, which you know accounts for the fact you know he was in his early eighties, um, and you know so he's a bit older than the kind of McCartney generation, isn't he? You know, is, is that yeah, he is. Two or three yeah. years older, because uh, he'd been to university, he'd, he'd been uh, and, and done German at university, and then he became a teacher. You know, so this so is he, right because he taught for a year. Look at, or so. If you look at YouTube, there's lots of clips of him or various clips of him on German television. Talking in German, to being well, yeah. in German, and talking to the crowd in German. It's really impressive, actually. Oh, absolutely. Really useful skill. Germany then, then as it is now, big music market, yeah. huge music market. So if you can talk to the audience in their own language. I saw the Spencer Davis group in, um, and I, it is, I went and checked as to when it was, because I had thought it was later in the 60s, but it wasn't. It was 1964. Uh, and they were on. They were on a tour, which was headlined as as the Rhythm and Blues tour. And and I've actually got the program in front of me that I, I managed to find on internet. And uh, and this was the evening. I saw them at the ABC Theatre of Wakefield, I think. Uh, and um, from the bottom of the bill, this gives you an idea. Nineteen sixty four. Cool. Package. This is an amazing. Package. You would have been what 14, 13? 14, yeah. Yeah, 14. Uh, this is a package tour in 1964. Height of, you know, Beatlemania. You know, it's actually a year after Beatlemania. 64. So from the bottom of the bill, Blues by Five, a group called Blues by Five. The Mark Lehman Five, who I really liked. I always used to be a fan of the Mark Lehman Five. So much so that I inscribed their name in Byro on the back of my army surplus backpack, you know, that we all used to wear. Like what a very days. cool name to select. They were very hip, weren't they? Yeah, they're very hip. I put them on tight. You always had to pick one yeah. tight, one hip name to put alongside the Beatles and the Stones or whatever. So Mark Lima 5, Wayne Gibson and the Dynamic Sound, uh, which is... It sounds like a, 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 another game of Stack Waddy, doesn't it? It does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Followed by now we're getting into the the air is rare. Now we're getting amongst the uh, the really famous groups. The Downliner Sect came next. You remember yeah. Downliner Sect? I do. Then the Spencer Davis group. Then Burn Elliott and his clan. Then the Soul Sisters. Then top of the bill, Man from Man. So that was your God. That was, that's one. That's one bill. That's incredible. That's so, one bill. I so Spencer would, Davis would have got what three songs, two songs, uh, probably, probably something like that. Because don't forget that also this whole show would be repeated later in the evening. You know, so there would be yeah. a six thirty show, and then there'd be an eight thirty show or something like that. But the funny thing about the Spencer Davis group on that bill was that Stevie Winwood was probably, a, I don't know if he was old enough to legally have left school, you know, at that, at that stage. You know, he was introduced as little Stevie Winwood, pretty much, you know. He would have been, probably been 15. Oh, okay. He tribute, was born in the middle of, of, of 48, I think. Yeah, oh, okay. Little Stevie Winwood, that's amazing. And uh, and they played, and here's the funny thing, 
that they played their new single, which was a cover version of an American R&B hit called I Can't Stand It. It wasn't particularly a big, I don't think it was a hit, really, but that was the new single. And so they introduced this as, a, as our new single and they played it. And they also, I th- I'm pretty sure they did George on My Mind, you know, because that was his party piece, Steve Winwood. He could do Ray Charles. You know? Yeah, Ray Charles. And then, exactly. they, and then they must have done, I can't remember what else they did. But here's the funny thing. They were then followed by Burn Elliott and his clan. And then the Soul Sisters, who were American R&B, you know, two, two women um, who'd been brought over. And their hit single was the same I Can't Stand It that the Spencer Davis Group had done. And the Spencer so Davis, twice in the same evening. No, but here's the weird thing. Spencer Davis Group were also their backing group. So the Spencer Davis Group played I Can't Stand It at kind of quarter to seven and then came back and played it again. Did their own version of it? They no, the other way around. Yeah. They'd done their own well, version. With her, the with her, other way around. Uh, right, yeah. You know, so it's it's such a really odd thing to do. You know, I suppose it just indicates that was at the point when uh, it was just uh, starting to switch over from cover versions to people doing their own stuff. Because I suppose at that stage, Man for a Man, you know, were were quite a big deal, and they were they were top of the bill. Their big hit at the time was Do Wah Diddy, which was the Exciters, an American, you know, R and B hit record. That's, yeah. that's how people did it. So yeah, that's um I remember seeing that. So Man from Man, and then what comes after Man from Man on the program that I got in front of me here, Mark, in that running order? Oh, they're not top of the bill, though. They are top of the bill. What comes after them? What is on the program? God save the Queen. Of course. Of course. You of had the course. you had the national anthem at the end Isn't of that the, bizarre? At the end of a show. <laughs> you did, how did people respond to it? They they kind of stood up. They, yeah, I wouldn't say they didn't stand, you know, bolt upright like my father and uncle Tom would during the they didn't kind of, salute. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, they stood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just part of the evening. You know, yeah. there'll be some scratchy old recording of God Save the Queen will be played through the through the speakers. And uh, and that's how it would work. So there you are. Um God, that seems bizarre. See, see <laughs> it was the first group I went to see was Soft Machine. It was quite a slightly different experience. I suppose, anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah, the world. But also <laughs> yeah, go on. Very rapidly in just a few years. But also Jerry Jeff Walker died. Didn't he? Jerry um, Jeff Walker, yes. yes. Jerry Jeff Walker died on yeah, October 23rd. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, he'd, uh, I suppose, he's one of those people that's just really known for one song. Which Mr. Is, Bojangles, which Mr. I Jan- absolutely adored. Yeah. Mr. Bojangles is still a fantastic song. And it's, uh, it, it's based on... It was supposedly based on his experiences in a in a drunk tank, uh, you know, in a police. Yeah, cell. a guy that he met in a cell. That's right. Who claimed to was be... was it his version that was the big hit? It wasn't. Well, was no, I don't, I, I don't know if it was even ever a big hit, but it was famously covered by loads of people, most famously by Sammy Davis Jr. Because here's the funny yeah. thing about about a song called Mister Bojangles. Um. The guy apparently in the drunk tank claimed to be Mr. Bojangles because he wasn't Mr. Bojangles because Mr. Bojangles was a, a, a real person, Bill Bojangles Robinson, who was a famous African-American singer, dancer, really big deal. And I think he died in the, probably died in the late 1940s or something like that. And, um, and so a guy in a drunk tank claiming to be Mr. Bojangles was a little bit like a f- somebody who drives fast claiming to be Sterling Moss, you know, <laughs> kind of, you know. Oh, I'm Mr. Bojangles, you know. Yeah. Uh, and Sammy Javis Jr., who had genuinely had a, a huge dancing career as a child entertainer. Uh, you can find clips on YouTube of... Oh, Sammy- yes. Sammy Incredible tap dancer. I think he actually, actually, I'm a th- I'm a right in thinking there is actually a clip of Sammy Davis Jr., really junior, dancing with the real Bill jo- Bojangles Robinson. I think there may be, so that may be a Could further be. connection. Um, and so he um, he took up this song, you know, as a as a wonderful image of a kind of 
broken down entertainer, I suppose. Uh, and it's a, it's still a fantastic song. It makes some really good records, yeah, Jerry Jeff, Jeff Walker, one way or another. I was intrigued to notice that his real name, he was one of those guys who wear, wore a cowboy hat pretty much all through his professional career and yet came from New York. You know, so <laughs> he'd never... He never punched cattle or anything like that. That was your ticket, though, was if you wanted to be seen as a country star. Wasn't that what you had to do? Well, but yeah, but he's one of those. Uh, it, there are a few guys, because his real name was R- Ronald Crosby, you know, not Jerry Jeff Walker at all. <laughs> it, it reminded me about Rambling Jack Elliott, who, of course, his real name was, oh, God, what is it? Odna Potts or something like that. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very, very kind of East Coast immigrant name. You know, it's not rambling Jack Elliott. Um, and he uh, he similarly wore a cowboy hat and kind of reinvented himself as a, as a kind of uh, dust-blown cowboy. Are you looking up his name there? Uh, his name was Elliot Charles Adnapods. Ad- Adnapods. There you go. Elliot Charles Adnapods. You're almost exactly right. That's brilliant. And uh, the, the, the other one. The, the, Funny he changed it. <laughs> Funny you changed it. And the other yeah. one who adopted a cowboy hat and also had very kind of similar antecedents is Chip Taylor. Chip Taylor, the great Chip Taylor, had written, wrote Wild Thing and Angel of the Morning and loads yeah. of other hits. And had done loads of really good stuff in his own right. He is a similar a kind of, um, you know, it comes from, uh, comes from the East Coast. Um, you know, he's, uh, I think he wrote a song called I Wasn't Born in Tennessee. You know, to to uh, to make make plain the head that this was just completely a kind of an aesthetic aesthetic pose that suited him. You know, and so uh, you well, know, how many people did that? My God, I mean, you, you, you I could say that, that John Fogerty did much the same thing. Yeah, John absolutely. Fogerty kind of completely repositioned him. He was actually from the West Coast, but kind of rebuilt the whole notion that he was from the the bayou and the swamp lands of. Uh, I of, suppose of the, so. The- I, I suppose it makes you it makes you look again at things like Eddie Grundy out of the arches wearing a cowboy hat and trying to style him, style himself as a, as a country western star. It's no more ridiculous than rambling Jack Elliott doing the same thing. Absolutely. Oh, Jerry Jeff Walker, you know. They're every bit as far removed from the world that they're, yeah, they're singing completely. about as uh, as he was. So uh, yeah, he uh, he he died. Um, I think yesterday. Uh, at the age of uh, at the age of seventy eight, Jerry J. Walker. Good innings. This is a junction in the word podcast. It separates that bit from this next bit. Here's a funny thing: records, long playing records that came out forty years ago this month. Forty years ago, Mark. So if you do so the usual, talking, okay, October you, 1980. Oh yeah, forty years you, back from that. It, it, forty years back from that. Second World War. Dunkirk. <laughs> Dunkirk. Okay. It is it's Dunkirk. Dunkirk. Okay, Battle well, of Britain. Yeah, no, it's Battle of Britain. Just yeah. got through the Battle of Britain. Okay. Yeah. Forty years ago this month. There you go. Oh my lord, Kilimanjaro. Tear, tear Two sleeves it. for that. There's uh, there's the sleeve yes, with the with the actual mountains. That? It's very rare that happens. There were two versions, weren't there? Why did they do that? That's a good record. I never understood why they did that. Anyway, 40 years ago this month, okay? 40 years ago this month. Here we go again. Oh, right, boy, by you too. 40 years ago. That's astonishing. (laughs) Good Lord. Okay, and the third one. Coming up right in here, please. 40 years ago this month. Bolding up the wrong way around. Oh, right, the river. Was it that? Bruce Springs in the river. 40 years ago this month. And I don't know why. I remember going to see him at Wembley at around that would have been around that time, maybe a yes, year or two yeah, later. Yeah, probably the year before the year after. I was one. that's the record that converted me to Bruce Springsteen. And, and that's the song, The River. Amazing. It's just I can't get over how long ago it is. I know. In, all, in all three cases. Yeah, you know? yeah. Somehow it seems longer than most of those calculations do, you know, because normally. I don't know. I don't know why it seems so so long, but you know, it's still plugging away. And there's a new Bruce Springsteen. Which of those record. records? There is a there's a new Bruce Springsteen record out now. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. With the same with the same band, largely. You largely know I mean? the same band, and uh, and, and largely uh, the same idiom. You know, forty and years. And a few later. songs that he's a few songs that I think he reworked. Well, quite wild songs. Yeah, yeah. Some certainly. Isn't that happening more and more? Don't you think? 
the, 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 the people writing songs are thinking, let's go back and rework stuff from before. Because the big issue they've got is, if you're writing a song now, do you write it about a word that the world that acknowledges what's happened? Yeah, that's right. In which case, it's very hard to predict what that will be like in a year's time when that comes out or whatever. And will people really want to hear that or they'd like to escape from it? But if you don't write about what's happened, then you're producing a world that, you know, again, seems, seems quite hard to connect to. Imagine if you were a novelist, you'd have the same problem, wouldn't you? I suppose so. How do you write about life now? <laughs> you know, it's uh, no, it's uh, it's it's a it's a great challenge, isn't it? No doubt about it. And as we realised, when you know, we talked talked to Billy Bragg this week, didn't we? For yeah, word in your attic, which you you can see on. Um, on the YouTube channel and uh, unusual outlets. And, you know, Billy's been, what he's been sitting there for like eight months or whatever. I think he said, that, didn't he say that the only, the only revenue he had was he'd sold a couple of old posters. He's been selling old posters. That was amazing. He's been digging up posters out the loft, hasn't he? And, uh, and old bits of merchandise and flogging yeah. them on eBay. I mean, yeah. not in a kind of uh, cynical no, way, no, no. But, because people really want them. But yeah, yeah. He, said, he said, I like to be making money and this is now pretty much cool. my revenue. It is. Quite. He's got a bit of royalties from, from a few record sales. He's got a bit yeah. of radio, but not much. Yeah. No, I know. I mean, his principal it. form of income is live performance, which yeah. doesn't really exist, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm sure it's the same with Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, you know. That, uh, I think it's easy to think that... that uh, that all these people are because they're famous. They're sitting on a pile of cash, or the, uh, or the, you know, the postman turns up every day with a, <laughs> with a royalty check. No, it doesn't happen at all. You know, it doesn't. And, and also, uh, these guys are programmed to work. Like McCartney just gets up in the morning and thinks, "I've got, to, I've got to be doing, I've got to be making a record." You know, yeah. you know, that's the way he's operated all his life. Yeah, he can't. Yeah, him. yeah. If you're Paul McCartney, you don't take a day off from being Paul McCartney, do you? No, you don't. You don't. You don't you go and read a book. Really. very hard to sit in a deck yeah, chair for two weeks. I, I, I suppose drinking he does. martini and uh, yeah, old, yeah. You know, pulp paperbacks. Not going to happen. I think, I think that probably applies to a lot of these people. That they just they're busy people. You know. They yeah, make, absolutely. They, they make themselves busy, but it. But you can kind of muck about with a record for you know, for out, for days as long as you feel it's going to come out. But if you think it's not going to come out. I know it must be opportunities for procrastinating enormous. Yeah, yeah. So, Alex, is Alex joining us? Are you uh, are you going to beam in, Alex, and actually be in vision rather than just being in the background? Did we just hear him in the background going, "Ah, is sorry, (laughs) we ah, there you are. There he is. Uh, There he is. Turn my blow heater off. Hang on. All right. There we go. All right. The silence. So Alex, uh, Alex uh, is up north, uh, uh, viewers. North. So hence he has a blow heater on. Well, to Please. southerners, I'd be to northerners, I'd be in the south. To southerners, I'm in the north. That's well, true. Where are you, Leeds? Are you in the Leeds. Um, the Warwickshire, Worcestershire border. He's all right, right. Yeah, Leeds. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we say Bath, so I suppose it's technically north. Yeah, Bath and grass. That's it. So, what have we got to tell people about in any other business, Alex? I was going to. I wanted to mention about. Sorry, I'm trying to trying to find my um, the thing on my on the screen here. Um, we have some new patrons. Oh, oh right! Go on, it's go always on. good to hear about those. Go on, go on. Yeah. Let's, let's fly the flag. Names. Here we go. So, joining the ranks this week, we have um, Dave Collins, who is an Access All Areas patron. Uh, where man. You, you get to be in the room when we do our crowdcasts. Yeah, uh, right. Of course. And, and also uh, get your own special words in your ear birthday treat. Okay, of course. Of course, and we've done a bit of we've done a Which bit of both we in explain. the last week. Yeah, yeah, on, where we did, it's a word in your attic done specifically for you, the patron. We, and uh, we, we appear arrive in your attic digitally in your attic, and you can go through all your old records and get stuff out. And, for a show and tell. It's very good fun. Yes. Uh, we also have Stephen Dallywell, uh, Claire Ashford, uh, who is an annual Access or area. All right, okay. Uh, annual patrons, of course. If you if you subscribe annually instead of monthly, you get a 15% discount, which is uh, not to be sniffed at, of course. Um, Absolutely. Aidan Hampson and Rob Shepherd, who is also an annual patron. So uh, welcome aboard, everybody. Hurrah. 
And if you want to know well, more about the, any of that, just go to patreon.com slash word in your ear where further details are available of uh, which uh, we, we have programs uh, tailored to every taste. Is that fair to say? People can choose, <laughs> choose, choose their level, their level there. Uh, I also wanted to mention, because we only, I only mentioned it about once every two years, it really does help if having listened to this podcast, you could go on Apple Podcasts or wherever you normally get your podcasts and leave a comment, uh, you know, whether it's a, a favorable one, but like I'm, I'm looking at uh, those in, in front of me now um, from uh, John Pickles, who says he's not a great cyclist, but during lockdown he's been trying to cycle every morning and have been, and he's, he's found the podcast via the word in your attic. He says they're so funny, so engaging, and often a, a rant which very much resonates with my own. Well, that's good to know. And so you can even leave an, I don't care if you leave an unfavorable one, like, uh, like, um, Little Beethoven has one, uh, left one saying, <laughs> You're going to uh, read this out. Great. Off, off the other care. Okay. Often interesting guests, though, Mark and David prefer to talk over their an answers and get in their own anecdotes, but mostly a couple of guys talking over each other and having a who can be the most pretentious com com competition. Mr. Hepworth usually wins. Yes! <laughs> I give so, it my best yeah. shot. Yeah, that, you know, that's, uh, you know, I've, I, I'll, I'll approach the rest of the day with a spring in my stride, yeah. uh, knowing that I... I win in the most pretentious contest. But That's honestly, you know, if you can, any kind of feedback uh, very definitely, definitely helps keep the, um, keep the bright red ball of human discourse in the air. And oh, that, in the air and off the beach. And that, after all, is what we're for. Bye-bye. Bye. This podcast was brought to you by The Word. Bye.